Greetings, royal family, and welcome to Passover, Feast of Unleavened Bread in the year 6026 FC, and that means from creation, and this is in solar time. And if you would like to join our celebrations, please visit us online at www.yahweh14400.com. Join our High Holy Celebrations by registering right there. Praise Yudhe Wavhe. Feast of Passover, Unleavened Bread. It's already started off new. Feast of Passover, Unleavened Bread. A Passover relates to who you are as a people. What is our nationality? It is Hebrew Israelite. We've been everything. Don't know who we are. We've been going through a serious metamorphosis. We've been colored. Negro. Afro-American, African-American. So when we tried to be Belalians and Belalians, when to name yourself after another African. Not, not even a land, just, just sick, just silly. Don't speak Belalian. There's no such thing as Belalian land. You don't have a Belalian name. I mean, just suffering from a serious identity crisis. And then here lately, you've been calling yourself black. And people from all over the earth who have the color you have don't relate to what you're talking about. What do you mean, black? My culture doesn't identify me like that. I don't identify to my self-worth on the basis of my being black. I am what I am on the basis of my culture, my history. Hmm? But see, my people in America don't know that. That's why I'm from to you. And that's why black people from all over the earth, all the islands and all the other countries, don't want to have anything to do with so-called Negroes, so-called black men of America, is because they know you don't know anything about who you are. That's what it's about. And a man that doesn't know who he is is just in bad shape. So I'm here to tell you who you are, cut the whole story short. You are Hebrew Israelite. That's our nationality. That's who you are. That's your nationality, Hebrew Israelite. You are the original Israelite. Nobody on earth is claiming to be an Israelite, but people that look like us, really. Jews don't call themselves Israelites. They call themselves Israelis. And later in life, you'll understand why they call themselves Israelis. They're not my subject tonight either. You can learn that from some of the books I write. Who you really are. I'm here to tell you, you're not a nigger. Now all of you that still think you're a nigger, then you just get this little yellow book. And you'll come into the knowledge that you're not one. Hebrew is your history. Hebrew is your culture. Hebrew is your language. Yahweh is your God. All of North Africa is given to you through your patriarchal father, Abraham. A tiny piece of it is called Israel today. All of that's your land through Abraham. It belongs to you. That's your birthright. Hebrew is your land. And you're destined to rule the world forever. That's what you call to do. My name is Yahweh and Yahweh. My father's name is Yahweh. That's who I come from. Perhaps you care the name of your father. And that's fine with me. My father's name is Yahweh. So I come in his name. As long as you fail to know Passover is your history, you're going to remain in poverty. Other people are going to rule over you. The Feast of Passover is a Hebrew holy day celebrated in the month of Abib on the 14th day of the month. 
Passover is the first day of an eight-day celebration observed by the nation of Yahweh. And we observe it according to solar time, solar calendar, the time which was instituted 6,000 years ago and beyond, beyond 6,000 years ago. We live in solar time. The calendar that you go by is made by man who is in opposition to you and your rulership. The calendar you go by today is sometimes referred to as the Roman calendar. And when you study who the Romans were, then you will know who's over you today. And they change time. Where? Turn to Daniel chapter 7, verse 25. Daniel chapter 7, verse 25. We will find out that the enemy of Yahweh, your enemy, has nerve to speak against the Most High. Most High means whoever speaks is beneath him. And here we have someone beneath the Most High speaking great words against the Most High. That takes a lot of nerve, in my opinion. What does it take in your opinion? A lot of nerve. And the purpose of speaking against the Most High is to wear out the saints who belong to the Most High. So here we see the saints of the Most High is the object of this wicked man. To speak against the Most High is to speak against those who are of the Most High. And to do what? Wear them out. Now, a synonym for wear out is wipe out. A synonym for wear out is to disintegrate. A synonym for wear out is for a people to exist no more. Be gone. That's what happened to the so-called blacks of America. You're not a people anymore. You are something expendable, used during slavery to pick cotton and build America and make it great. Now, you're a burden. Something to be wiped out. And they're busy doing it. And you are helping them to do it. With birth control, abortion. Oh, glory, Yahweh. You need to pass over all of this. Here's somebody speaking great words against the Most High. That takes nerve, doesn't it? That has to be a rebel of the worst sort. And the game plan is to wear out the faith. It said it shall happen. So the only people I see wore out are black folk in America. So we must be the saints of the Most High. I'm here to tell you that you are. And what did this person want to do, this group of people? They had in their mind to change the time, that means the calendar, and the laws of God. Now they call it legislature. And what is law today? Just legislate it away tomorrow. Yeah, you heard of affirmative action? See, the, that was legislature. You know the courts that you trusted in? Remember how you trusted in the court? 
Yeah, you remember. Courts reversed themselves on you, didn't they? Everything you're trying to do, they call reverse discrimination. Affirmative action. Gone. My little king is shocking too, isn't it? Wow. Spend the game playing all the time. Where are you out? The laws have been changed. People no longer follow the laws of God. They follow who? The laws of man. Whether the land, the man who's in charge of laws today is against the most high. So when you follow the laws of man, you're against the most high, even if you don't intend to be. It says what? The saints of the most high will be given into the hand of the wicked who are speaking against the most high. Now, how do you get into his hand? Through his education. How do you get into his hand? Through his politics. How do you get into his hand? Through his religion. These are all traps set. When you socialize with them, you really took a turn for the worse. Segregated schools had its problems, but we weren't the wicked people we are since integration. Says, but the saints of the Most High, though we're being given into his hands, will it last forever? No, it say until a time and time and the dividing of time. Now you have to be a mathematician to understand this. You have to be able to divide, multiply, and carry on, right? Time and time and a dividing of time. You have to be sharp to figure this one out. Laws change on you. All the words you read are against the Most High. That means everything you read is against God. That's why there's no Bible in school. That's why there's no prayer in school. Why? They're against God. One wicked man can, or one wicked woman can file a lawsuit in America and kill prayer in the whole system. Now, in verse 27, it says, no, verse 26 lets you know judgment is going to sit. And the saints of the Most High are going to take away the wicked ruler's dominion. To consume this dominion and to destroy this dominion or rulership until the end of it. Now, it takes superior power of mind to get this done. And in verse 27, the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High who were previously under the hand of the wicked. And all the nations of the earth shall serve and obey the Son of Yahweh. And those who follow Yahweh, because it belongs to Yahweh in the first place. Now, it may not look like much, and it may not look like this is going to happen, but it is. Just keep living. <laughs> I'm here to make you the ruler of the world. And you that don't want to rule the world, love being ruled over. And those of us who are going to rule don't mind at all ruling over you. See, that doesn't disturb me one iota. You're not wanting to rule. <laughs> See how easy it is going to be? You don't want to rule. So what? That means those of us who are going to rule will just be over you. That's all. No big deal. It's really all right. So the two kinds of people, one who rules and the ones ruled over. That's just the way it is. All over this planet, that's the way it is. So it's up to you what you want to be. Now, you can't be ruled by yourself. You've been trying everything you know. And nothing has worked for you. Nothing you tried has worked. You've been marching 
demonstrating, calling out, fussing and cussing, trying to get white folks to treat you like they treat themselves. You cry and moan and groan because they don't treat you just like they treat each other. White folks go out and save up money 20, 30 years. Whole families, father, mother, sisters, children, nieces, cousins, uncles and aunts have saved up money for 20 years, open up a factory, and they get ready to hire their nieces and nephews and cousins and uncles and aunts and the sisters and the daughters and the mothers and fathers who saved up the money. The niggas here that they open it up. There go the niggas, out. I'm here to make an application. <laughs> a nickel, haven't sacrificed nothing in 20 years, didn't put a dime in the place and say, I, I have this as much right to work here as, as anybody else. If you don't hire me, I'm going to file a discrimination suit and mark and pick at this joint. <laughs> These people are hiring their own children. They sacrifice the money. What right have you to go out there and demand they hire you? you I'm heavy on you, aren't I? But you need it. Because you're a bunch of dependents. You wait on white people to get it all together and sacrifice and suffer and plan and stay up night and day and pay architects and engineers and surveyors and fight the bankers and put their money. I mean, they go through all kind of hell to get this thing together. You don't go through nothing. And walk out with Africa. Well, I graduated from Harvard. And here's my resume. Check it out. <laughs> Can't remember a thing you learned in school. If they gave you a test on what you went to school for for four years, you would make a F. Sitting in the office. You only went and studied long enough, and that was a class to study. You know how you wait the last minute? And they call it cram. That's like force everything in that head that'll go in there and try to hope some of it stay long enough for the exam to get over. Mm -hmm. And when you walk out the classroom, you be how I ate that bad for us. Whatever phrase you may C, B, D, or F, doesn't make any difference. Because you didn't go to school to learn a thing. Isn't that rough on you? I'm talking about people so bad. I was sitting in the classroom next to you. I know what you were doing. You were partying all semester. We don't like to hear that. Hmm? See, if we don't hear this kind of wisdom, we can still run around and place our poverty at the feet of somebody else and say it's that fault. But what I'm saying to you tonight causes you to pass from poverty over to riches. Takes away the excuse. You want to be president of a company in America? Buy it. I'm looking for doers of the word. You who are ready to make a difference. I say it costs to be the boss. You have to pay the price if you want to live the life. Some of us want to live the life without paying the price. When the suffering and hardships from my being in slavery reached a climax in Egypt, the compassion of Yahweh was upon us. And Yahweh heard our affliction. I'm saying that the suffering and the hardships of my people in America have caused Yahweh to hear your moan and your groan. And out of Yahweh's compassion, I come. Because I've heard my people's affliction. And Yahweh is doing today what he did in the past. When we were in Egypt, 
Yahweh set in motion a divine preordained plan to redeem us. Why? Because we were his chosen people. And he set in a divine plan to redeem us from our captors. We weren't able to redeem ourselves from our captors. And we, the so-called blacks of America, have been in the hands of our captors for over 434 years. 435 years now. And we've been unable to redeem ourselves from our captivity. So you're in need of a Passover today, just as you were in need of a Passover in Egypt. Our redemption was initiated with an event called Passover and concluded with the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Yahweh showed Pharaoh many signs and wonders. Why? To convince Pharaoh to let us go. Today, I'm showing Pharaoh of America many signs and wonders. Yahweh is showing many signs and wonders. You are looking at weather like you've never seen it before. And they should make it national headlines and do movies of the destruction Yahweh is raining down upon this country. And you who are from all over America can bear witness that Yahweh is doing devastating work in nature. And I told all of America and the world on West 57th Street that if you mess with me, I'll show you. You'll find out Yahweh controls nature. And Yahweh is doing a devastating destruction on this country. Many signs and wonders. But as in the past, Pharaoh would not submit to Yahweh's command as brought to him by Moses. So this modern day Pharaoh is not submitting. It says in the heart of Pharaoh was hardened in the past. Neither would Pharaoh let us, the children of Israel, go as Yahweh has spoken by Moses. Let's go to Exodus chapter 9. Exodus chapter 9. Exodus chapter 9, verse 35. Read. And the heart of Pharaoh was hardened, neither would he let the children of Israel go, as the Lord Yahweh had spoken by Moses. So the hardening of Pharaoh's heart and mindset against letting us go was not his own idea. Alone. He wasn't his all alone. Yahweh had something to do with it. So Yahweh hardened his heart, caused him to say, well, I'm not going to do it. I refuse to submit. I want you to know emphatically that Bush knows I'm here. Reagan knows I'm here. Your senators and congressmen of America know I'm here. I know they know I'm here because they have sent me books and letters thanking me for writing to them, informing them of Yahweh and what he's doing and why. So I have concrete proof they know I'm here. I made sure of it. But they're not running to let us go. I'm telling them why they suffer, why the country's going through hell. Because you're holding my people, the so-called blacks of America, and won't let them go. And the reason that Yahweh was harden Pharaoh's heart was because he wanted to show forth more power. 
See, I, I'm not through showing what I can do. <laughs> I wonder. People are wondering about Yahweh. What? So, so now, my name is becoming as prominent as other so-called leaders, you know, uh, dead and alive. while I live. And I'm the only one carrying the name of God in his forehead, inside and out. <laughs> only one. Now I have a book. I'm talking about Passover tonight. Passover was the final plague of a series of ten plagues that Yahweh placed on Egypt. So I'm causing plagues to be placed on America in a series. You have an earthquake caused by Yahweh. Volcano eruptions caused by Yahweh. Floods all over the earth. Rainstorms all over the earth. Snowstorms all over the earth. Wind just decided to blow it 100 miles an hour for no call. Just jump up and start blowing 100 miles out. <laughs> Can't find out where it starts from or why. Just destroying stuff. All kinds of diseases, all kinds of sickness. Plagues. Drugs. Plagues. Snow is a plague. There's so much snow. They call cocaine snow. Play. All because I'm here after you, the so-called black men of America, first. That's why all this is going on. When you study their history, you find that Pharaoh made many promises that if that he would liberate the Hebrew people if Yahweh would just ease up. And each time Yahweh eased up the plague, he went on back to doing what he was doing, treating us like he always treated. See, Pharaoh is known to do that. And that's the way this man is in America. The American government is known to give you a little bit and take it back. Make you a lot of promises, and then he fails you on every hand. Huh? Now your set asides are gone. Moses' right bill is dead. Affirmative action is gone. Reverse discrimination is in. Skinheads are in. Neo Nazis are in. Huh? White supremacist cults are raised up all across the country is in. They beat you up on the college campus. Hmm? Burn you out their neighborhood. How many heard about these things? Everybody heard? So you're not free, are you? Greetings, royal family. Let's talk about the most prestigious private university in the universe, the University of Yahweh. It is here where students, parents, Adults and teachers study the divine mind of Yahweh, Ben Yahweh, thus elevating them to contemplate and understand the loftier concepts and principles, enabling their minds to focus and think on an extraterrestrial level. This intellectual ability and unique set of skills supersede all base, mundane, and terrestrial thinking, thus allowing one's minds to open up and flourish with an overwhelming abundance of creative ideas and loftier concepts, making life and living more enjoyable. The University of Yahweh is woven deep within the fabric of the moral principles of truth, honesty, integrity, true holiness, righteousness, ethics, and justice for all. 
The university of Yahweh is designed for the Godhead, and this includes students, parents, adults, and the Godhead. In the university of Yahweh, the online platform, you gain a structured format to the approach of the divine mind of Yudhe Yahweh. We welcome you to visit our website at www.universityofyahweh.org. This platform is specifically designed for the Godhead and the Godhead family. The 144,000 chosen to rule in righteousness. We look forward to working with you as we prepare for rulership in righteousness. Praise Yute Wafe. Praise Yute Wafe. Beit Noon Sophie Yute Wafe. Shalom, world family.